everyone uh, welcome to a new video in this video we'll discuss regarding herpes zoster vaccination this video is intended for medical personals only if you are a non medical person just please kindly contact your doctor before going for a vaccination of herpes zoster again today we are discussing a specific brand called shingrix we don't have any association but for the sake of understanding we have used the brand shingrix for, for the discussion so today let's dive in and understand regarding the vaccination of herpes zoster usually shingles the vaccine it's which is available from gsk is called as shingrix shingrix is a vaccine which is indicated for the prevention of herpes zoster and post herpetic neuralgia specifically in adults more than 50 years or older the guidelines which are issued right now suggest that this vaccine can be given to individuals who are more than 50 years of age in two divided doses one dose uh once given can the second dose can be given after the two months to six months in the gap of that right we'll be discussing more about that so it is administered as two doses 0.5 ml each with second dose given two months after the first so shingrix is not indicated for the prevention of primary varicella infection that is chicken pox that we should understand uh before diving into the topic coming to the composition and administration of shingrix Singrix each dose 0.5 ml usually it's available as powder form which we need to uh, dilute it so this 0.5 ml has almost 50 micrograms of varicella zoster virus it also contains glycoprotein e antigen and the adjuvant which is used which is called as SO1B which contains around 50 grams of plant extract of uh, molina and uh, the glycoprotein e which is available is produced in chinese hamster ovary cells by recombinant dna technology if you are allergic to this you should be careful while taking the vaccination coming to the administration of vaccine the vaccine is administered intramuscularly specifically in the deltoid muscle to be uh, preferable and it should be given with caution in individuals in the people or the patients who have thrombocytopenia or any coagulation disorder because there is increased risk of bleeding following intramuscular administration coming to the safety considerations if you see there are uh, if you see some patients who come for vaccination they have syncopal attack even before giving the vaccination itself because of the fear of the needle so that is one thing which we do see with the uh, uh, shingrix vaccination or any other vaccination for that uh, point of view and second most important thing is uh, in the post marketing surveillance study they have seen that there is a uh, raise of uh, uh, three cases of uh, gullian barre syndrome within 42 days of given shingrix vaccination so i think that is one thing which we need to remember while giving the vaccine of shingrix the other adverse reactions of shingrix can include uh, pain at the injection site myalgia fatigue headache and all those uh, side effects are seen with uh, shingrix uh, and some of the other uh, side effects which can be seen with uh, shingrix is gastrointestinal uh, symptoms such as nausea vomiting can also be seen some people might even experience uh, fever Uh, shivering also can be seen and this was seen specifically in people who are uh, up to 50 to 16 years of age compared to 70 years and above coming to the efficacy part there are two studies done which is joe 50 for the individuals who are more than 50 years and joe 70 study which is for uh, more than 70 years the 50 years study it showed that they have divided into two groups uh, one receiving the herpes zoster vaccine and the other one not taking it and they have seen that after the vaccine also there were six cases who were found to be positive whereas two trend cases are i mean the cases who have uh, not received the vaccine are much more the efficacy stands somewhere between 87.7% so it is not that if you are given vaccine you are completely free from herpes zoster but the chance of you acquiring herpes zoster is much much less uh, significant again the same study joe 70 it showed much better uh, results compared when they compared both the studies almost 25 cases they have found that the herpes zoster was seen and 284 cases there was no herpes zoster i hope you understood this part so the people they have divided two pools and they have seen that uh, the people who were given vaccination had less uh, infection or with herpes zoster so that's clear coming to the last part the flexibility is very important thing uh, so if the first dose is given today after 2 months the second dose can be given and the flexibility is between 2 to 6 months it can be given any any time between 2 to 6 months after the first dose so that flexibility is there so coming to the last slide two things very important contraindications and precautions contraindications of course if there is an anaphylactic reaction to any component of the vaccine again the vaccine should not be given second thing is that 
any patient with bleeding disorder or thrombocytopenia should not be given intramuscular injections not even uh, this vaccine any other intramuscular injection because there's a high risk of bleeding in these individuals so that's all about shingrix we'll come back with some new video thank you so much for watching the video see you with the next video thank you